I'm Gemma Lonsdale, psychic medium and life coach, and you're listening to the Happy Psychic Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of the Happy Psychic Podcast. I am your host, your guiding light, Gemma Lonsdale. And today I really wanted to talk about healing journeys um, and some of the misconceptions of, you know, healing, what healing means, how we heal and how we know when we have to heal as well. And we'll probably touch on like spiritual awakenings and things like that as we go. But I guess the, the first thing is that we're always healing. You know, we're never in a situation where we're not healing something. We're just not always aware of it. So whenever I talk about a healing journey, that doesn't mean that we only have, you know, certain parts in our life where we're healing things. I'm really talking about the time when we're more conscious of that healing happening um, and more more aware, really, that we are healing things, that we have things coming up. And this often comes in times of spiritual awakening and times whenever we're more aware of our spiritual nature. Now, whenever we think about spiritual awakenings, sometimes I think we can automatically think, oh, this is when someone becomes a psychic or when they realize that they're a healer and that sometimes does happen but that doesn't always have to be what a spiritual awakening is to me spiritually awakening is about becoming aware of the world around us becoming aware that there is something else in this existence it's not just this physical world and becoming aware of how interconnected we all are and that there is a higher power And sometimes we are more aware of that than others. You know, even on my own journey, there are times whenever I'm more spiritually spiritually awake than other times. We're, we're, We're human. We're not robots. We're not perfect. We're not fully enlightened. We are you know, we're, we're flawed. So of course, there are times whenever we would regress back into old behavior patterns, maybe getting more embedded within the spiritual world, or sorry, more embedded within the material world, for example. You know, whenever I think back on my own journey, I was very, very fixed upon the corporate world and climbing the corporate ladder, success, salary rises, recognition, the material goods that that would buy me, the nice car, the nice house, the nice holidays. So I was very, very focused on that world and very driven by how other people would see me rather than actually how I seen myself and whether I was feeling fulfilled. And I think we can all have that to a certain extent at some stage or another on our life. We are born spiritual beings, but the reality is that the societal expectations in the society that we live within can sometimes really start to skew that. So it is possible to spiritually awaken and then regress. Not everybody who has a spiritual awakening experience stays on that path. Sometimes we catch a glimpse of it and then we we sort of dip back into, you know, the old behavior patterns and into the, I don't want to say the 3D world, but into into more of the material world, the earthly, the earthly existence, you know, the the physical touch, the ego, the all of those things. But sometimes we do have periods in our life where it is a bit more gradual, but we we don't really regress, but we we start to waken up a bit more gradually to the world around us. And then other times, you know, people will have these spontaneous, full-blown spiritual awakenings where their, their whole world turns upside down, perhaps overnight or in a in a period of days or weeks. And all of a sudden they realize that they're, you know, psychics and healers and they have a career change and their whole life transforms. And that absolutely does happen. I think that it's really important to be aware that actually whenever that does happen, that doesn't mean that we are the finished article. That is just a part of our journey. It's like a I wrote, I don't want to say a roadblock. Roadblock isn't like a checkpoint. Checkpoint would be a better word. So it's like a checkpoint on our path, a checkpoint on our journey. And whenever we get to those stages where we start to become very, very aware of the path that we are on, we can start to become very aware of the fact that we um, have a lot of healing to do and we feel more driven to do that because we want to be a better person we want to we want to feel more fulfilled and we we are compelled to turn inwards however (laughs) i would say that um it would depend how much in in our ego we actually are whenever we have that spiritual awakening because we we of course we always have our ego being human you know the ego always exists 
However, sometimes we do see people around us who might have that spiritual experience and perhaps we recognize it in our own path as well if we have been down this journey, but we might have the spiritual awakening experience that is so immense and so amazing that we think we are just one step away from God himself, um, you know, and put ourselves above other people. And that really is our ego talking. You know, we we have to heal and it takes time to heal. A spiritual awakening doesn't automatically mean that we are a healed person. Um, but the healing journey itself is a whole other challenge. <laughs> Whenever I think about the healing journey, it's really, um, it's one of the biggest challenges that I've had in my life. And this is where I'm talking about being consciously aware of things that we are healing and being aware of the things that are coming up and understanding why they're coming up and why you're feeling triggered. And it's... <sighs> You know, of course, yes, we're, we're, we're always dealing with things like that in our life. But whenever we hit a period where we're going through quite a large amount and it's all being compressed into a shorter space of time and we're very aware of it, it can definitely pose challenges to us. However, we can also be in the situation of wanting to heal and not really knowing where to start or how to access that information. And the truth is that we are masters of repression. We repress a lot of our trauma. We're often thinking that we're in a much better position than what we really are. So we might feel like we're more healed, like we're more complete, like, oh my gosh, that's it done. I don't really have that much trauma anymore. There's always something else to come. We'll never be completed our healing in this life. And that's that's from spirit. That's one of the things that Spirit tell me, you know, we will never reach a stage in this lifetime where we have completed all of our healing and offloaded um, all of our trauma. And that goes for every single person. We never reach completion stage whenever we're on the earth. So we're never fully enlightened. You know, we talk about people being fully enlightened, that they're like, you know, that they're complete. That's it. They're perfect. Um, they're, you know, completely healed. That doesn't happen. That's what my guide is telling me now, that that will not happen for any single human. We're always going to have baggage and trauma and things like that to carry over with us to sit and pick through. We're never finished. She's she's actually saying to me that it's very, very cyclical. So we basically, as we're dealing with trauma and we're healing, there's something else that comes up, whether it's from this existence, past incarnation, or while we're healing something else at one time in our life, trauma is happening in another part of us so we're always creating trauma carrying trauma developing trauma processing trauma so it's just one big cycle constantly so we're never ever going to be completed with that cycle however we can significantly lessen the trauma and the baggage that we do carry whenever we're in the situation of maybe not feeling fulfilled with our life not feeling happy not feeling as though we are living the life that we are supposed to be and knowing that we want to get to that fulfillment usually that is a sign in itself that we need to heal there's usually things that we need to clear out trauma that we need to deal with but it's really difficult to actually figure out, OK, well, what, what is it? What is it that I need to be doing? What is it that I need to be focusing on? And that's one of the big challenges. And that's where I really feel so drawn to helping people with at the moment, which is why I have really started to focus my um, membership community on focusing on these sorts of things and tools and motivational things that will really help people on their healing journey. So if you are really dedicated to healing, you might want to check that out on my website. But there are definitely some things that would indicate hidden traumas that are trying to come up. Obviously, dissatisfaction in life is a big one. You know, if you're not satisfied and you're just ticking over, you're not really feeling fulfilled, that's that's a biggie. But Sometimes it has to become really significant discomfort before we're really going to actually take action against that. Just because we're feeling that doesn't mean that we're going to action that. Just because you recognize that in other people doesn't mean that they're going to action it and take action on their healing journey and try and bring all of that stuff up in order to have a better life. Because sometimes they're ha sometimes people are happy with checking over to a certain extent there's a comfort in the discomfort you know that's why when people 
if we look at people who have been abducted and things like that and they have that is it Stockholm syndrome where they start to build a connection and feel some sympathy towards the people that have captured them like that is a real thing and it's it's the exact same thing whenever we're in that discomfort sometimes there's a there's a certain comfort in that that we want to stay within uh, like a self-protection mechanism so we can't really force people on their healing journey even though we may see some of those things in them themselves so one of the um well there's actually there's a couple of different things that would really indicate that you do have hidden traumas and what i would suggest you look towards first of all are unhealthy and unhelpful behavior patterns so if you have those in your life whenever you look around you that is definitely an indication of trauma being present and what i what i would say is that these behaviors would definitely stem from a root cause there is something that you're doing that is bringing you a sense of comfort that you know that you can't get because of this thing that is is unhealed within you that can often be multiple different things but often it stems from a root and I talk about the snowball effect because what we'll find is that as a snowball starts to go down a a snowy mountain it starts off small but as it as it progresses down that mountain it picks up more snow it gets larger and larger it might pick up a bit of pace it might start to get quicker but it's picking up twigs and branches and different you know debris as it goes through and that is exactly how our traumas go it starts off as that little snowball and then as life happens we just pick up more and more things so it can take quite a while to unfurl you know various different traumas and pick apart different behaviors because we have to understand why we're doing it in the first place and and that isn't an easy task i really want to assure you that this isn't something that you can necessarily help overnight you can't heal it overnight don't be expecting that you know if if you did have that that's a miracle you know there are people that suddenly just stop their overeating all of a sudden and then you know they they lose like you know 150 pounds overnight and that's it their life is completely transformed but that doesn't necessarily mean that they've healed the trauma that was causing them to to do that in the first place but it would indicate that there's been some sort of a release however healing takes a long time healing can take months years decades that's really what you're looking at and it's doing it in smaller chunks if you think of a, a cake healing isn't eating the whole cake at once healing is cutting it up into slices and smaller parts and digesting it bit by bit by bit over a longer period of time so don't be thinking of healing being something that you just really need to concentrate on on a really short period of time it's something that is ongoing and it is going to take time but it's healing is about creating new patterns creating new behaviors re rewiring your thoughts you know creating new thinking patterns for yourself and it's those sorts of things that are really going to transform your life and transform your healing um so whenever we take a look at our lives some of the different unhealthy behavior patterns that would be indicative of there being some healing there with you i just want to try and give you a little bit of a helping hand here to understand within your own life where you know where you could start with but things like unhealthy attachments to people you know if you've had any romantic relationships or attachments where you've just got obsessive about the person or you know you've really just really clung to that relationship and that connection like your life depended on it and you're, you would only be happy if that person was to be in the connection with you or to reciprocate your interest that's really one of the things that would indicate that there's some sort of trauma and hidden hidden trauma repressed trauma you know could be dealing back to your childhood with you know whoever your your caregivers were um excessive laziness you know that's definitely something to do with um hidden trauma as well overspending um be it, you know my guide says spend thrift spend thrift but you know whenever we're in that period of um overspending and overindulging in material possessions um drug use alcohol use um overtly sexual behavior and like promiscuity that's not saying that you can't go out and have a one night stand or have casual sexual encounters but you know if your if your life is based on that or if that's a, a bit of a pattern that you have and you're maybe not you know get, getting fulfillment from that then that would definitely indicate that there is some sort of trauma there um, and just general patterns that we have in our life so for example one of mine was 
whenever I had relationships with people in the past, you know, I would have had a serious partner for, you know, a period of years. And I always just got to the stage where mm, this isn't what I want. This isn't who I thought they were. You know, I just, I don't want to continue, continue forward with this. So I was constantly leaving relationships and eventually I realized okay you know what why do these relationships keep not working out why do I constantly change my mind about these people because I was becoming aware of the pattern and the discomfort for me was really starting to become more prominent than the sense of comfort that I had by having a partner and whenever I was able to pick that apart I was able to understand a little bit more about myself and my own personal desires and realistically what I required from a person and the sort of person that I should be wanting to build a connection with from the starting point so it can be really useful whenever we just take some time out and do some self-reflection on looking at the different behaviors and things like that that we have it can really transform our lives because Yes, it's not going to necessarily mean that you're going to heal instantly. It's not going to change your life around in a day necessarily. However, it's starting to lay the foundation for a good, solid transformation to happen in your life. Being aware of that need to heal, being aware of those patterns, being aware of those behaviors and accepting that actually they're not helpful, they're not beneficial for you is the basis for change. And change isn't going to happen overnight. You need to be really gentle with yourself. I do, I, I can't say that enough. I think we, we sometimes have such incredibly high expectations that we place upon ourselves and I, I really don't want you to do that being aware is enough I've seen it something on TikTok today and it was saying the progress is progress we don't want to talk about how much growth there has been we don't want to talk about how much you've moved forward progress in itself is progress it doesn't matter how much and not everything is going to um, be very very apparent and sometimes we can be on a healing journey and this is applicable to anything really on our path but we can be on a journey in life where we are moving forward inch by inch by inch and we don't even realize that we're moving day to day it's only over a longer period of time that we really see the progression that we've had so I, I just want to reiterate that we don't want to be measuring ourselves on how much growth that we've had it's not a race this is a marathon you know it's it's about the journey this is very much where it is about the journey it's not about the end result and it's very much about dealing with the stuff that comes up being aware of it letting things come up creating space for things to come up and becoming a more self-analytical individual and yes you might have periods where you are more focused on this than others you might find that you waver and all of a sudden you do regress a little bit and you're focused more on the material world or you're not creating the space and the time to focus on this sort of stuff but that's really something that I hope you can take away with you and just not overly obsess about it. It's the same as comparing ourselves to other people. This is not, it's not important to do that. We all grow at different rates. When I look back at my corporate career, whenever I first entered the corporate world, you know, I've seen a lot of people shoot up the ladder quicker than what I did at the start until all of a sudden I just reached a stage and it was just whoop, 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 and off I went so everybody goes at a different rate everybody has a different a different time in life when things come to them you know we have a different path a different journey and we, we're all going to have a different story to tell so treat yours as a really unique novel that you're writing and let things happen in their own time and don't push yourself too hard things will always come at the right time I do want to just mention with that as well the spirit realm I find are very very in charge of this healing you know we we obviously can be in the driving seat in terms of dictating the direction that we go however it's the spirit realm that will be in charge of how much we're served up at any one particular time think of it as your higher self they know what you can handle that they know, they know what you can deal with um and just let let that happen and trust that you're on the right path and you just need to keep doing the work and keep creating that space for yourself and that time and it'll happen, it'll come.
Okay, so I really hope that you've enjoyed that. And I love talking about this stuff. This is the stuff that I'm really, really passionate about is really helping people on their healing journey and helping them understand themselves in a lot more detail. You know, I get so much wisdom and knowledge from spirit when it comes to this stuff that I really want to help other people become the best version of themselves. That doesn't mean that you become perfect. But it just means that you're always evolving and focusing on, okay, well, what else can I offload here? What else can I heal? How can I become a better human? How can I act in the best interests of my future self? What is my future version going to really thank me for doing today? And um, yeah, I just, I, I hope that I can continue to help you all on this journey. You know, this was whenever I first started this post, this podcast, actually three, I think it was three years ago or four years ago gosh um this was really my um my whole idea i wanted to help people on their healing journey and help them become more aware of the spirit realm and their own spiritual nature becoming aware of the spirit realm doesn't need to be about doing tarot cards and you know developing yourself in that regard although many people you know, will take that path and become more of aware, more aware of their intuition and things like that. But it's becoming more closer to yourself. It's developing a stronger connection to yourself and not being too detached in the material world where you're full of ego and chasing material possessions and wealth without really developing the spiritual aspect. So I really hope that you've enjoyed that. There is plenty more to come from. I know I haven't done a podcast in a while where it's just been myself talking there. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Um, I do have some exciting guests um, to line up as well. However, there's definitely going to be more from me coming up. Um, that's really what I'm feeling driven to at the moment is still having guests coming on to talk about different things but I really am feeling so pushed at the moment from the spirit realm to be sharing my own knowledge and to be sharing the information that they give me so that's really what I'm going to be using the um, the podcast for as well and I love you all thank you so much for your support don't forget that you can check me out on the socials TikTok is where I am um, spending most of my time I'm also on Instagram and I have the website and also the um the membership, which is all on the website as well and some interesting courses on there. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Mm-hmm.